Hello and welcome to this first video in a series on Adobe Illustrator. In this video we're going to be creating this sky background with the kind of blue purple nebula and stars and over the course of the next couple of videos we're going to be fleshing out the scene with a planet and spaceship. If you'd like to support the channel of course uh, you can always like and subscribe that's super helpful. If you'd like to get the project files for this uh, patrons have access to all of that and you can also find them on the website which will be linked down in the description below. With that said, let's get to it and make a space scene. So I'm just going to start with a rectangle and I'm also going to go to, uh, with command U, make sure that my, my snapping is turned on. And with that rectangle, I'm just going to turn off the stroke and then set that fill to dark blue is fine for now. I'm going to go over here to the mesh tool. I'm going to hit U on the keyboard for that. And I'm just going to make a couple of points here we don't need to make it really complex. I want to be able to select all of these points. So I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, which is A on the keyboard, and just drag a box around all of these points. So those selected, I'm going to expand out my, my color picker here. So I'm going to hit that little arrow thing twice so that I get RGB. I want to kind of give it just a little bit more of a blue, so something like that. And then with these over here on the right, I'm going to shift those just a little bit more red. The ones on the very left to make those a little bit more green. So to move these around and, and get something a little bit more interesting, I'm just going to click on each of these points and going to drag them around. And to start off with, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do something like that. So we've got kind of a little, little swirl going on. I do want to bring in more of the dark, kind of tweak some of this stuff so it's a little bit more maybe red or a little bit more blue here and there. And that's honestly probably fine. We really don't need to do a whole lot with this because this is just going to kind of be the, the background. It's going to be the basis for our stars. So I'm going to switch back to my main selection. So hit V on the keyboard for your main selection tool and go over to the layers. I'm just going to name this uh, space. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that layer alone. And I'm going to make a new layer. We'll call this the stars. And with this uh, selected, so with this, this mesh selected here, we're going to make sure that's active. I'm going to hit Command C or Control C if you're on Windows. Go to uh, stars, make sure that layer is active, and then hit Command F. So it pastes it right in place. So if you hit Command V, it's going to paste it off to the side. And we can see it, it put it on the space layer again anyway, so I'm just going to drag that up to stars. Make sure that our mesh is active. And I'm just going to start adding some effects to this. Click on effects, texture, and go to grain. You can probably already see kind of where we're headed with this. I've found that usually soft and contrasty work best. So I'm just going to boost the intensity on this so we get more of these. And what I'm going to ultimately end up doing is just kind of duplicating this layer a couple of times. So I'll click OK. I'm going to set the blend mode. I'm going to go to uh, probably screen. And we can actually, if you want to tweak kind of the position of some of these, you can. Select this guy again, hit Command C and Command F so that I've got another copy. And on this copy, I'm just going to kind of expand this out a little bit. And I'm also going to right click and then do right, uh, transform, reflect, and just click OK. It should reflect horizontally. I'm going to clip this though. So I'm going to do another rectangle. And then with um, that rectangle selected, I'm going to hold shift and select my rectangle behind. So we want to make sure that they're both active and then just hit command seven. And what that's going to do is create a clipping group. You can also get to that from the object menu, go to clipping mask, make. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this clip group and the mesh. And I'm just going to lock those for now. I'm going to click and hold on my primitive tool. I'm going to go to star and you can click and drag out and it's going to give us this star shape. While you're still holding this actually you can use the arrow key on the keyboard to adjust the number of points. And I, I kind of like the four pointed star here so that's good. And then if you hold the command or uh, control I think it is on Windows you can adjust how large the, the points are. So I'm going to bring the points out fairly far from the center about like that. And then I'm just going to uh, switch to my direct selection, select these Four corners, holding shift, and then just gonna round those out so we get a nice 
rounded corner on the inside. Let's hit Command Zero, zoom in on this. For this star, I'm gonna add a few different effects. For now, I'm just gonna kind of boost the brightness of this main fill to something light, but not too light. I just wanna go into the fill. I'm gonna set this to screen so that we can kind of see through that. And it's, just, it's really just making it a little bit brighter. What I'm also gonna do is select this fill and duplicate item. So we've got a couple of these. Now on this fill, I'm gonna click on effects and go to path and I wanna offset the path. And I'm actually gonna offset this negative. So holding shift, I'm just gonna go down. So by holding shift, it, it jumps in 10 pixel increments. And that's really good right there. And then what I'm also going to do on this fill is I'm going to give it a feather. So we'll go into our stylize, give it a little bit of a feather, and then I'm just gonna bump this up also with the arrow key. On the bottom one, what I'm going to do, instead of blurring it, I'm going to click on this and then go to effects, outer glow. And our outer glow, I'm gonna change to Something, you know, kind of bluish. It just needs to be fairly bright. And I'm going to boost that blue so it's a little bit larger, kind of like that. And then we can kind of adjust the feather. So we've just got a little bit brighter. Actually, we can even take that fill color, and I'm just going to use my RGB sliders up here to make that even brighter. Um, I'm going to hold Shift and Option. Uh, that would be Shift and Alt on Windows and scale this down a little bit. So I'm going to take this star and open up my symbols panel here. I'm just going to drag the star over into the symbols and we'll call this star. I'm going to change that to a static symbol though. And I'm going to ignore the nine slice scaling. We, we don't care about that. So I'm just going to click OK. And this star here is now a uh, symbol group. So if I go over here to the symbol sprayer, that's shift S on the keyboard. And if you don't see that, you might have to click and hold on the three little buttons down here. And we can basically just paint stars. These are all just instances of that one object. That's pretty good. If you add some that you don't want, like these two are overlapping, you can hold the option key and get rid of them. I'm gonna click and hold on this and go to the symbol sizer tool because most of these are gonna need to be smaller. So holding option, I am just gonna kind of push some of those down a little bit so they're a little bit smaller. And then maybe just boost a couple to give us kind of a uh, constellation or like an implied line to follow. So there we go, that's probably good. So that about does it for the sky and the stars and all that stuff. So I will see you in the next video where we add the planet to this scene and hopefully also in the final video where we add the rocket ship to it. And that's all, bye.